the mysterious disappearance of 18-month-old Joshua Davis Jr. The probability that someone came into the residence and actually abducted the child is very, very slim. Authorities believe the toddler wandered off. Joshua's parents believe he was abducted. I don't think he wandered off. My baby's out there somewhere. Somebody has him. They believe their son was kidnapped. It's an unfortunate circumstance that uh, we do have to look at it. He can't reach the doorknob. Like, he reaches maybe to the bottom of it, but he can't reach tall enough to where he could turn the doorknob. Well, if he can't reach the doorknob, then how did he get out? What I want to know. I believe he was abducted. The child was possibly abducted. They had the cadaver dogs. He's nowhere in this area, I don't believe, because there's no trace of him coming in the yard. The search for little Joshua has been expanded. We are taking your calls. Take a look at this boy, an 18-month-old toddler. All of you mothers, you've been there. The first time they turn that latch and get out the door, you can't believe they can actually do it. They can. But did this boy leave the home on his own volition? His mommy tells me, point blank, he could not turn a doorknob. Unleash the lawyers. Joining us, Penny Douglas Fur, Atlanta. Alan Ripka, New York. To you, Penny, to me, that speaks in the mom's favor that she had nothing to do with his disappearance because if she had, she would have said, oh, he could get out. He could definitely get out. That's not what she said. She told me that um, he could barely reach the doorknob and that he couldn't really turn the doorknob. That speaks to her defense. Well, it does, Nancy, but it sounds like somebody in that house wandered out with him or he did get out and she didn't think he could get out, but he got out and somebody picked the kid up when he was in the yard. Maybe somebody drove by and picked this child up. Take, a listen, to, some... take a listen to exactly what the mom said, Penny and Allen. Has your son ever done that before? Have you seen him go out? No, ma'am. He can't even, he can't reach the doorknob. Like, he reaches maybe to the bottom of it, but he can't reach tall enough to where he could turn the doorknob. Well, if he can't reach the doorknob, then how did he get out? That's what I want to know. Okay, I thought the theory was that somehow he had managed to turn the doorknob and get out the door, but you're saying he absolutely could not do that, right? Yes. You know, Penny, you, you have an excellent reputation as a defense attorney, but when you use the phrase, somebody else wandered out with him, yeah, I don't agree with that. Adults don't wander out. Like You make it sound like they're aimlessly wandering no, saying, out the door. They don't know what happened. Hello, suddenly I'm outside and the baby's gone. It doesn't happen like that. No, I'm saying somebody intentionally took him out and left with him, or okay. He, he got out the door and somebody picked him up in front of the house, either one of those because scenarios. I will never forget, and, and, and Peter, you've seen the, the twins plenty. Uh, Alan Ripka, I will never forget the first time John David flipped that lot right in front of me, flipped the lot on the door, opened up the door, went out. I'm like, I couldn't believe it. I yelled out, he got out. He's can you get out. Like there was an emergency because I've covered all these cases. You know, did they, they can get out. And I, you know, I suddenly reached and got the other door before he could get out of the laundry room to stop him. And they want to get out. That's their goal. I don't think they have any idea where they're going to go, but they want to get, they want to get outside. I understand, you know, in this particular case, Nancy, you have eight adults in a very, very small area, uh -huh. all of them witnesses to this situation. And uh, with interviewing each and every one of them and tracing back the steps of this child, the child had to be in an eye shot of one of these adults at all times. It seems to me that if these scent dogs picked up no scent, the only explanation is this child was handed to somebody outside and then went into a car and drove off. It's the only reasonable explanation I can think of. Let's go out to Ellie Justin, our chief editorial producer. Ellie, what more can you tell us? Well, Nancy, some other things going on in the search right now. The mother tells us that an FBI recovery team, evidence recovery team, came to the home, took the clothes that she was wearing that night and the clothes that the father was wearing that night. We also know that they've collected trash cans from every home on that block where the family lived. They've also taken the step of pulling those skirts that are at the foundation or where a foundation would be of a mobile home. They've searched under those uh, in both the family home and at neighbors' homes. They've done a very thorough search, still no sign of Joshua. We know that the Texas Rangers in on the search. Michael Board joining us out of Texas. What does that mean? 
It means you've got the very best police officers in the state of Texas on this case. The Texas Rangers are trained in missing persons cases, and they are going back and they're re-interviewing everybody in that home. It's a much different situation when you have a New Braunfels police officer and a Texas Ranger there sitting in front of you asking you questions. Uh, if something happened, if someone knew in that home knew what's going on, the Texas Rangers and the FBI will be able to find out. Right now, I'm quoting Lieutenant Michael Pinshorn from New Braunfels, Texas. He says, although we are still searching, our primary focus now is shifting more towards the investigation aspect, investigating to find out exactly what happened to Joshua Davis on the evening in question. Well, we are fortunate to, tonight to have a lieutenant with us. What did you mean by that, lieutenant? Well, you know... I think we all agree that obviously children do not simply disappear. Uh, you know, this is not necessarily a case of a stranger coming and taking this child. Nothing to indicate this is a kidnapping or an abduction. Mainly we're looking at it as something happened to this child in or around this home, which led to his disappearance. Period. In fact, police are saying it's less likely that the boy wandered off. What does that mean, Lieutenant? Well, again... Whenever our officers arrived at the scene, when you can, when you look at the doors, they actually have a glass storm door and an interior door. And literally the entire time that our officers were there, the interior door would be open. The exterior glass door with the faulty latch was the only one that was closed. Very conceivable that the child could have wandered off undetected. You had a helicopter hovering the area. Why? We actually had helicopters on multiple occasions, uh, not only from the night where the child disappeared, uh, circling the area using their FLIR, which is the heat imagery system, uh, also just flying around doing aerial photography, just again looking for anything out of the ordinary where the child may be. And could you tell me, Lieutenant Pinshort, what exactly the dogs discovered? You brought, brought out the tracker dogs. Yeah, we actually had several different types of dogs, uh, just for standard search and rescue dogs, uh, cadaver dogs, bloodhounds from some of our state prisons, each one of them specializing in different type of tracking methods. Uh, although we may have had several locations where we had some interest, not necessarily alerting to some type of a location where the child could be, though. Hundreds have come to help search. Volunteers, shoulder to shoulder with police, prayer vigils there around the home, trying to find baby Joshua. Where is the 18-month-old toddler? Now, Lieutenant Pinshorn, I'm not attacking you, but I seem to hear two different theories coming from you. One is that you're now, this is now turned into not necessarily just a search for a baby that wandered off, but an investigation as to what happened that evening. But you're also <coughs> saying at the same time that, hey, maybe he wandered off. Which one is it, Lieutenant? Well, you have to keep in mind that in all probability, if a child disappears from a residence, he's wandered off, and that was our primary concern. The entire time we were running a parallel investigation, just making sure that any of the other scenarios, be it somebody taking him, that somebody else is involved in it, we have to make sure we have all of those bases covered should we not locate the child in close proximity. Obviously, that's what's happened. We have not located the child in well over a mile around this residence, so now we're starting to look at these other options that we have been investigating the entire time. My baby's out there somewhere. Somebody has him. He says I still have hope. He's going to come home.